through my work I was traveling to these amazing places and I'd always loved photography. I realized that through photography you can come back from a place and you can share it with people. And you can share what's happening on the ground. You know, an image, it doesn't matter what language you speak, but you can understand a photograph. I'm both an amphibian conservationist and a photographer. And whenever possible, I try to combine the, the two. Robin Moore is a really dynamic individual who's very dedicated to conserving endangered species. He has especially rich knowledge of amphibians, frogs, salamanders, Sicilians of the world. One, two. Very nice. I work with the Amphibian Survival Alliance whose mission is to uh, protect amphibians in their habitats around the world. And I also photograph with the International League of Conservation Photographers, uh, a group of photographers using their images for conservation. Okay, you're in business. I came to Costa Rica for a book I'm writing in search of lost frogs, to find some frogs that have disappeared and reappeared. But while I was here, I, I couldn't miss this place. I timed my trip to Costa Rica, to the Osa Peninsula, to try and coincide with the first big rains of the year, because that's really when the amphibians come out in force. Costa Rica is a really small country, but we hold more diversity than a lot of the big countries. Costa Rica is the size of West Virginia. And the Ocean Peninsula in particular is a place where we have a lot of endemic species. 2.5% of all the world's fauna and flora in such a small area. Costa Rica is the example to follow in terms of how the government can work with local communities for conserving their natural habitats. They recognize the importance of protecting their home and they are shining examples of conservation working for people. You have this unique richness of plants and animals in the Osa Peninsula that are found nowhere else. It's a little nub on the Pacific coast. It's one of the biologically richest places on Earth. As a conservationist, as a photographer, I jumped to the opportunity to come here, to see it and to document it. Robin He's been uh, focused on finding the lost amphibian species of the world, which means he's been searching for, together with local groups, these species that have been missing to science for a decade or more, in some cases more than a century. We're at a sort of turning point. A lot of species that we presumed had gone extinct, some of them are turning up. So this is when most of the frogs uh, come out after dark. Robin, working with local groups to find these lost amphibian species, he's really on that front edge of conservation. You've got to find them to save them. And that doesn't mean to say that we don't need to worry anymore, but what it does tell us is that you know, some of these species may be more resilient than we thought, and that could tell us something about how we protect both them and other species. So they may have clues as to why they survived where others disappeared around them. So this is a glass frog with eggs. Time to gear up. Images of endangered species can bring these animals to life for people. This is what we came for. If they don't see them, if they don't begin to have some level of at least empathy for them, no one's going to do anything about trying to save them. Oh, glass frogs because they're translucent bellies. So you can see right through them. If you put on a pane of glass, you can see their organs, their little heart beating. And I always just find them very fascinating. They're like dinosaurs. I mean, they've been around for over 300 million years, unchanged as a group. I mean, they lived alongside the dinosaurs, and here they are living alongside us. And it's fascinating to me now that a group that has survived for so long, unchanged, is now suffering way bigger declines than the mammals and the birds, almost a half of amphibians now are, are believed to be at risk of extinction. So we arrived here in, in Piro and then we went out in the afternoon looking for this uh, Golfo Dulce poison dart frog. We're just going to go try and find a little poison dart frog. It's an endangered frog. Um, 
from this area, endemic to this area. It was top of my list of things to find and uh, there's a specific time of day when they're active. They start to be more active in the late afternoon, so we've waited till the heat's gone down. And now hopefully we'll go along the stream and find them. They're quite hard to find, but uh, fingers crossed. The thing about frogs, they're typically cryptic animals, so not many people come into direct contact with them. We had to look for the, the frog to find it. So photography brings the frogs to the people. They are at the call of the poison dart frog. So the way you find it is you listen for the call and then you, you try and home in on it. Although usually the frog stops coming when it's close. He's home there. <laughs> wow, look at that. Beauty. It's the most toxic frog in the whole country. You don't want to stick that in your mouth. <laughs> Good job finding him. <laughs> it's very easy to say. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the beauty of going out with someone like Manuel, he, he grew up here. He grew up walking these trails. His grandparents' house used to be just here on, the, on the, this property. I have all my life here living in this beautiful rainforest. This is my, this is my life. This is my home. Back in the bag. Ready? Ready. Yeah, it's That's a nice shot, man. Oh, he's off. Come on, frog, give me a break. There he is. <laughs> no way you could do this by yourself. Okay. Ready? This is a nice. Okay. One, two. Yeah, stay there. That was a nice one. Look at that. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> so, one of the challenges of working in the rainforest is the rain and the humidity. And this morning, my camera. Uh, decided to stop working. I'm going to leave it here all day in the hopes that it will resuscitate. So, fingers crossed. Luckily, I brought with me a backup body. There we go. My camera died when we were out in the field, so while I normally prefer to shoot the frogs as I find them, we've actually brought this, this little guy back with us and I'm going to shoot him here and then we'll release him uh, back where we found him. Here he is, he or she. Um, this is a green and black poison dart frog, Dendrobates auratus. I used to keep these very frogs when I was 11 years old, but this is uh, the first one I've ever seen in the wild. So it's quite exciting to, to be about to photograph it. Poison dart frogs are interesting. Once you take them out of their environment and you keep them in captivity, they lose that toxicity. That's the reason I was able to keep them when I was a kid. The reason they lose that toxicity is it comes from their diet. So they either eat ants or some of them eat a kind of beetle that gives them that toxicity. So it just shows how connected they are with the environment. And when you remove them from the environment, you know, things change. Where exactly you went there? Frog. Anywhere on these leaves, actually. I uh, developed, as a child, uh, just a fascination with amphibians, with frogs, with newts. Um, I think it was the fact that you could go out and you could see them, you could interact with them, you could gather the, the spawn and hatch the tadpoles in your bedroom and watch them change and watch them grow. And I could never get out with birds or mammals. Okay, this is going to be the shot. It's going to come up here. 
everything, makeup, set design. Uh, I'm gonna have a frog wrangler. It's gonna be beautiful. A lot of fun shooting those little guys. Fun and infuriating. Maybe I should go around that side. <coughs> now he's gonna want to go the other way. Look, let's go. Oh him. god! Of course. Let me come around that way because he's gonna go that way. But as long as you get the shot, everyone's happy. Frogs are often referred to as the bellwethers of ecosystem health. The canary in the coal mine, you know, they're the first to disappear. You remove the frogs from the environment and the environment suffers, we suffer. Frogs, they eat insects, crop pests, disease vectors. You know, studies have shown that if you remove frogs from the system, immediately you see the nutrient cycling being affected and that immediately results in more algae and decreased water quality. This is little fella. And they're forming a very important link in the food chain. You know, they're both predators and prey. So birds, snakes, mammals, a lot of them eat frogs. So often we don't know until an animal is gone what value it has to us. We're all part of the same system and if you throw that out of whack, you're going to see the consequences. In the last morning, we woke up sound of heavy rain. It rained the whole day heavily and to me that meant frogs. The frogs are going to be coming out. As night fell the rain started to subside so we got our headlamps on, jumped in the car and we headed to the swamp. That's better. Yeah. Deafening cacophony of frogs and a uh, breeding orgy. Music to my ears. The wall of sound just hit me. I mean, I'd never heard anything like it. Uh, frogs of all different species just calling in, in concert. So the hormones were in overdrive after the heavy rains, and the males were there calling their little hearts out to try and attract the females to come and mate with them. I was very happy with the photos that I came back with, especially from that last night. I was thrilled to capture the, the gliding tree frog. I was thrilled to get a shot of the hourglass tree frogs calling and the red-eye tree frogs are just the most photogenic animals out there. It's almost like they're designed to be photographed. This is uh, top three, if not the top night. I mean, this is incredible. I'm not sure, I've certainly never heard this volume of calls and just like the sheer number of frogs that are out. I've never seen this before. Incredible. Really an incredible experience to see such a diversity of life in this small area. You know, to know that that still exists, uh, to me, is enormously reassuring. All right. Good night, Brooks. And I want my son to grow up in a world where, you know, he can go to places and hear the calls of frogs, where he can explore forests like those that are left in the Osa Peninsula. If we're going to exist, we need to make darn sure that life around us is sustained. Twice in four years, 
Costa Rica was first on the Happy Planet Index, which is showing us the greenest and the happiest country in the world. And I think we need more examples of that. I think we need to see that conservation and human well-being, quality of life, are, are closely tied. Documenting success stories, stories of people who are effectively doing conservation, is as important, possibly more important, than communicating what we're losing. We have to know what we're working towards.